Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Devotional Life with Paul and Jeannie. We are, as always, glad that you're with us. This is our time when we turn our hearts, our hearts, our hearts. <laughs> our we're going to keep going. <laughs> yeah, let's keep going. Our hearts, uh, minds, thoughts towards the Lord. That's what we do. And let's see, last time we were talking about repentance, weren't we? Right. And we gave different definitions of repentance. You can go back and listen to that one. Uh, but let me say, repentance is where we make that big U-turn in the road of life and head towards the Lord, leaving behind everything else. What do you think about that? I think that's right. My notes say you do a 180 degree change of direction. Goodness gracious, and ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know I did not look at Jeannie's notes when I said that. <laughs> and the other thing that uh, we mentioned was that uh, some folks think they're repenting, or you may think somebody's repenting, but it's not sincere, because as soon as the circumstances lift change, yeah. or change, yeah. uh, they're right back to it. Um, as a Christian, I know that I'm not always aware of my sin, and so, because I get you know, sidetracked or whatever. Yeah. So I personally ask the Holy Spirit to catch me in my sins, to remind me when I sin. You know, kind of like when you're driving on the freeway and you kind of get off your lane, you go bum, 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 bum on right. your tires. Yeah. That's what I ask the Lord to do, That's tap me good. on the shoulder so that I'll I'll be quick to recognize that I've gotten off track here and I need to ask the Lord to forgive me and then refill me again with His Spirit so I have the ability to follow through with what He's asked me to do. Yes. But that's something I do throughout the day, the beginning of the day and throughout the day, because I don't trust my flesh. <laughs> you know? yeah. It can, it can uh, just so slightly get off course. Right. And the reason why I want to stay on course and stay tight, because I don't want to miss out on anything that God has. Absolutely. And I know in my day He's got all kinds of divine appointments lined up. He's got things that he wants me to do. He wants me to find shelter in the middle of the storm. And so if I have any sin or those things distracting me or in the way that I haven't dealt with, then my mm -hmm. ears become dull and my heart becomes hard. So that's a lifestyle for me. Yes. And we do these things because we have been given the golden opportunity to have a beautiful friendship with Jesus. Right. He's alive. He wants to be your best friend. Hey. Actually, what do you tell the grandkids? Who's your BFF? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is my BFF. They know that. Best friend forever. So moving forward today, we're in Exodus 11. And I'm going to uh, read from the New Living Translation this time. And Verse 1 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, I will strike Pharaoh and the land of Egypt with one more blow. After that, Pharaoh will let you leave this country. In fact, he'll be so eager to get rid of you <laughs> that he will force all of you to leave. Goodness. Tell all the Israelite men and women to ask their Egyptian neighbors for articles of silver and gold. Now the Lord had caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the people of Israel, and Moses was considered a great man in the land of Egypt, respected by the Pharaoh's officials and the Egyptian people like, what a difference from when Moses first yeah. started out on this yes. a job that God had given him, and he was begging and pleading, and his <laughs> knees were knocking, and he was stumbling <laughs> over his words, and not me, yes. don't send me, and right. the people are mad at me, Lord, look what's happening. And now right. he, he just uh, set his face like flint, and he just obeyed God one thing after another, and the Holy Spirit gave him the boldness that he needed, and the facts were, as he went over and over and over, everybody was witnessing what God was doing. Yes. And so that elevated Moses, not because of anything he did or deserved. But because of what God. Because what was God, and yes. obviously God was using him to. Now look, that's supposed to be our story. That's supposed to be my story and your story and all our devotional partners' story. That as we continue to follow God. Walk it out. And walk it out and stumble and fall and get back up and have questions and continue to trust God and continue to move forward. It will then become obvious, not only to you, but to others around you. Hey, what's going on in that guy's life? What, mm -hmm. What's going on in that woman's life? There's something different. Mm -hmm. And that's the Lord. Mm -hmm. As you've learned to depend on him. And as God reassures you throughout that journey, 
I'm with you. I've got a plan, like he did with Moses. Yeah, you know, I've I've enjoyed watching, if you will, the weaker side of Moses, mm. where he tried to get out of it any mm. way he could, where he complained against the Lord, where, you know, he was just uh, afraid. Afraid, and that's not the Moses we've come to know, but the Moses we get to see now is the one who has stumbled through his obedience, but kept obedience and faithful. And now he is, what, what are the, what's the word say? Uh, he was fashioned by God is the word I was thinking of. Yeah. Uh, it, it says that he was respected. Yeah. By, um, by all the, all the folks in Egypt, fish, Pharaoh's officials and Egyptian people alike. Right on. Yeah. So, but I'm sure he was not even aware of it. He was just doing his job now. Yeah. You know, it's like somebody who does something for the Lord. Right. They're just doing their job. And uh, it's not about them. You know, this is the uh, this is the ten count, mm -hmm. like in boxing when somebody's knocked down. Mm -hmm. This is the ten count, and uh, Pharaoh's, you know, going down for the count because this is the tenth plague, and I I find it remarkable how incredibly stubborn uh, Pharaoh is that it would come all the way to this last judgment right where he doesn't recognize god for who he is yeah or he just won't bow yeah won't bow should i keep reading yeah okay verse four moses had announced to pharaoh this is what the lord says at midnight tonight this is the lord talking to pharaoh uh -huh. i will pass through the heart of egypt all the firstborn sons will die in every family in egypt from the oldest son of Pharaoh who sits on his throne to the oldest son of his lowest servant girl who grinds the flour, even the firstborn of the livestock will die. Wow. Now, yeah. there was a time back when Moses was a baby that not this Pharaoh, but the Pharaoh before had gone through and slaughtered babies. And there was a wailing and heartbreak yeah, over right. them losing their children. Because they would just throw the the uh, male babies right into the Nile. Right. Because they had no value in the sight of the Egyptians. Yeah. Um, and we kind of referred that to the babies in the womb. Abortion, yeah. Yeah, they had no value. So um, very, very, very sad. Very. But this is going to strike at the Pharaoh's heart. Uh, now, even the firstborn of the livestock, like you had said, you know, it represents uh, that Christ was God's Father's only Son, and right. He sacrificed Himself in order for us to be uh, forgiven as right. a sacrificial which lamb. Which will be in the instructions for them that night. Which yes, we call we're going to see that. Yeah, next time of what they do at the Passover. It's called the Passover because death passed, passed over, over them. them. Right. And we'll find out why. Actually, we've. We're just about out of time here. Should I read real fast? Yeah. Then a loud wail, a wail will rise throughout the land of Egypt, and a wail like no one has heard before will ever hear again. But among the Israelites, it will be so peaceful that not even a dog will bark. Wow. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. Still talking to Pharaoh. All the officials of Egypt will run to me and fall to the ground before me. So they're going to run to God. Please leave, they will beg. Hurry and take all your followers with you. And God says, only then will I go. Then, burning with anger, Moses left Pharaoh. Yeah. And I think he was burning with anger because this didn't have to be. Right. And it really falls in Pharaoh's lap. Right. And I think Moses is angry and he said, look what you did. And look what's going to happen because of you. Right. Ooh, this is harsh. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for today. And Thank you for the time we can spend with our brothers and sisters. Most of which we know, some we don't, but we love you too. So bless each heart, Father. Thank you for loving us. We pray this in Jesus' wonderful name and everyone says. Amen. Amen.